boy, guess what? It's 2022! Mindblocks 1 is getting updates again, Mindblocks 2 will be back, and hopefully some of my unreleased games will make some big progress. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. I'm Zanslands, and welcome to my yearly projects video, where I go on about all the things I'm doing, and where you're sure to find an unnecessary segment in the middle about a seahorse named Flege. You know. And it all starts with taking a look at the past year. 2021! Ooh, so this was a long year. I mean, I just didn't stop developing things at all. But let me explain. So here were the goals that I set out to do last year. The big one on the list was to fully finish the HTML5 recreation of Mindblocks. And I have to quote myself here. Down to every last lemon. I started the port on February 2020, the year prior, and started releasing weekly early access updates in November 2020. I continued releasing an update every Friday for three months, four months, six months, ten months, a full year. I mean, I did not miss a single Friday for over a year. And while I was doing that every week, I also released a $5 bundle of 11 of my games. By the way, no one has completed it yet. You should get it and be the first. And I spent every day in March making 31 piano songs somehow. Where did I find that time? And I worked hard on an unusually elaborate projects video, and a video about the entire history of Mindblocks to celebrate its 10 year anniversary, plus a strange website called wetclap.com, this thing, and that thing, and a bunch of miscellaneous update videos showing off Mindblocks updates. Like, I look back on my year, and I seriously don't understand how I could possibly have done all that, and had a full time job without secretly being in possession of a time turner, or at least sacrificing sleep. And so that is why it felt like such a long year to me. And honestly, you know, as productive as it was, and as proud as I am of everything that I did, it's probably best that I never go that hard with my schedule again, unless any of you have a time turner I can borrow. But hey, after 53 weekly updates, Mindblocks was fully ported! On November 21st, I could officially cross that item off my list. And guess what? I even spent Thanksgiving week not working on Mindblocks. <laughs> Incredible. All in all, release went pretty well. The desktop version was particularly buggy, but I fixed most of those issues in a small patch on December 5th to finish the year off. However, taking a look at the list of 2021 projects again, you might notice a slight problem. After all that, I had less than a month to, uh, Fully port Mindblocks 2, Spike Tower, and finish Redobot. Fortunately though, and you'll never believe this, I was visited by myself from the future who dropped off a real time machine. So I went back in time to bet on some football games and used those earnings to hire a full team of developers to accomplish everything before 2022. Nah, just kidding. But I did get the main menu of Mindblocks 2 ported, so that was great progress. So, in the end, I think even though last year's list was a little too ambitious, it feels actually amazing to see Mindblocks back on the web, and I'm so excited that Mindblocks 2 is already rising from the ashes of Flash. F flashes. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, but first, oh boy, I see that last year, this channel went from 15,000 to over 16,000 subscribers! We finally surpassed the number of m mackerel huts? Flesh? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> what's a mackerel hut? I thought these were supposed to be relatable stats, not just random words put together. Mm, no, yes, mackerel huts are totally real. I'm pretty sure they're not. Well, remember when we first met and our first task was to preserve vulnerable species? Why, of course I do. Where you generated entire worlds to sustain the ecosystems we couldn't maintain here. It was a pretty neat plan of yours, as usual. Why, thank you. But uh, there were unforeseen flaws with a few of the worlds. The balance of flora in the Bale Monkey world caused an increase in atmospheric oxygen levels, which enriched the monkeys' cognitive abilities, leading to their construction of tree housing and organized bamboo farming. The beautiful landscapes of Erica's Worm Snake's world caused the snakes to regenerate vision, leading to the snakes to pick up a newfound societal love of art and pottery. However, without the pioneering of sunscreen, the worm snakes often got sunburned. And finally, mackerel huts. You see, I placed Monterey's Spanish mackerel in the same habitat as dusty striped squirrels, 
but I couldn't have predicted the squirrels started to find mackerel quite delicious, and their diets changed. In defensive strategy, the fish started forming little houses and barricades to keep the squirrels away. And by the time I took account, indeed, over 16,000 mackerel huts were built, an impressively large city on the shores of their Hophologitopia. Dude, what? <laughs> So you've been keeping tabs on tens of thousands of vulnerable species? As best that I can. Well, gosh. All right, well, I'm going to get back to the script. Thanks, Flesh. All righty, 2022, huh? Well, <laughs> here are the main things that I'd like to work on this year. And let's start with mind blocks. For the last couple of years, I've had a content update planned for 1.31, like new mobs and items and stuff. But... Uh, as soon as I finished the incredibly long and tedious task of porting mind blocks, I suddenly had a wave of motivation and inspiration for the game, and plans changed. Sorry. I believe the content update will end up actually being 1.33 next year, with uh, two new updates released first. So the first one is a secret update I've been working on. I think it's actually going to be really fun, and something kind of totally different, so I'm curious what you think it is. But in probably in a couple months, you'll start seeing sneak peeks come out on Twitter and Discord and stuff. But for now, this is all I'll show. Just this tiny button. What mysteries might it hold? My goal is to release the secret update by the end of summer, like September-ish. Then I'll work on the second update of the year, 1.32. This one isn't much of a secret, it's, it's more of a follow-up on the fact that the game was entirely recreated. Uh, and it would introduce some modern game features like texture packs and possibly localization. Uh, even though these features are now possible, they're still very complicated to add, so that's why it's like a totally separate update. My goal is for the second update to be completed by the end of the year. Meanwhile, I'm also planning to bring Mindblocks 2 back this year. The HTML5 port has already begun, and it's already pretty obvious how much easier it is to port than Mindblocks 1 was. Though, I'll be making sure to update and improve the code as I go along, so it's easier to work with moving forward. Uh, my goal is to have Mindblocks 2 fully ported by maybe October-ish, uh, complete with some small new features like doors and stuff, and a little update video. And hopefully, porting the game will also give me the same boost of motivation and inspiration that the Mindblocks 1 port gave me. Alright, next on my list is that I would like to port Spike Tower to hacks as well. I'm excited to see this one ported, because when I originally created it, I had to simplify a lot of it. Because Flash ran so poorly on phones, which is not ideal for a fast-paced arcade game, let me tell you that. But when it's ported, it'll run super smoothly, and so I'll be able to do more of the fun things that I wanted to do with the game. My goal is to have it ported by the end of the year, so I can finally continue developing it. One thing that I've been itching to do is to get back into making more devlog and tutorial style YouTube videos. And so to push myself to start with that, uh, I'd like to start a new video series which should touch on the topics of programming, generative art, game development, and some of the other things I do. Uh, I used to do more tutorials in the early days of my channel, but due to the Dunning-Kruger effect, the more I learned and the better I got at programming, ironically the less confident I became at showing and sharing that knowledge. So my more personal stretch goal of the year is to push myself to regain that confidence and to share more of the things I learned with you. This year I'll also be working on some small music projects on the side as well, and my goal is to create and release some new music which will be free to download and use. I also have a stretch goal of finishing producing a single and to start developing a music video for it, similar to what I did with Mirror Road. I don't plan to spend too much time on this, but I've had some ideas swimming in my head for a while now, and it would be really cool to start playing around with that. And finally, my last goal of the year is to actively be working on porting Finland to Hacks before the year ends. Finland is a super ambitious project, so it'll no doubt be a lot of effort to port, but it'll ultimately be very worth it to be able to continue development. Yeah, this is a big list again, isn't it? Bah, that's okay. I think a lot of the main goals will be well within reach, and even if only half of these things are done, it'll already be a really exciting and productive year. So, at that, I hope you have an exciting and productive year, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you want to watch last year's projects video, give your time turner 1600 spins, or click the video on the left. And if you want to see next year's video, 
You're gonna have to go searching because I think I misplaced it. But, uh... Also, a big ol' thanks to Elixir of Will, Ghost ID, a random developer, and Eli S for their donations. Alright, that's it. Bye. Bye.